The fetal skull is formed of three parts, vault, face, and base. The vault extends between the root of the nose and supraorbital ridges until the nape of the neck. The face extends from the root of the nose and supraorbital ridges until the connection between the floor of the mouth with the feet and neck. The base is the area between the face and vault. The vault is the area of obstetric importance. I will describe it in terms of bones, sutures, fontanelles, areas, and diameters. Regarding bones, there are two frontal bones, two parietal bones, two temporal bones, and one occipital bone. Sutures are non-ossified membranes that connect skull bones. The frontal suture between the two frontal bones, sagittal suture between two parietal bones, coronal sutures between frontal bones anteriorly and the parietal bones posteriorly, lambdoid sutures between parietal bones anteriorly and occipital bones posteriorly. Some sutures have no obstetric importance, like sutures between parietal bones and the temporal bones. Fontanelles are wide gaps in suture lines that connect between different sutures. There are two important fontanelles, anterior fontanelle and posterior fontanelle. The anterior fontanelle connects between frontal suture anteriorly, sagittal suture posteriorly, and the coronal sutures laterally. It has a diamond shape and called bregma. The anterior fontanelle ossifies at around 18 months after birth. The posterior fontanelle is triangular in shape. It connects between sagittal suture anteriorly and lambdoid sutures laterally, and it becomes ossified at term. Some fontanelles have no obstetric importance, such as anterior inferior fontanelle and the posterior inferior fontanelle. Sutures and fontanelles play an important role during labor in identifying the degree of flexion of the fetal head, also they facilitate molding. Regarding the areas of the vault, the area in front of coronal suture is called sense point. It's also known as brow. The vertex is a rectangular area bounded anteriorly by anterior fontanelle and the coronal sutures, posteriorly by posterior fontanelle and lambdoid suture, and laterally by two longitudinal lines passing through parietal eminence. The area behind the lambdoid suture is called occiput, and it is limited to the occipital bone. Regarding the diameters, there are longitudinal diameters and the transverse diameters. The presenting longitudinal diameter depends on the degree of flexion of the fetal head. If the fetal head is well flexed, the presenting diameter is suboccipital pragmatic diameter. It extends from the nape of the neck to the center of the pregnant and the measures 9.5 cm. With deflexed head, the presenting diameter is occipital frontal, which extends from the occipital eminence to the root of the nose, and it measures 11.5 cm. With extended head, the presenting part is brow, 
and the presenting diameter is min 2 vertical which extend from midpoint of the chin to the highest point on the sagittal suture it measures 13.5 cm with fully extended head the presenting part is face and the presenting diameter is sub min 2 pragmatic diameter extending from the junction of the floor of the mouth with the feet and neck to the center of the pragma and it measures 9.5 cm regarding transverse diameters the most important is by parietal diameter extending between the two parietal eminence measuring 9.5 cm it is the engaging diameter in all attitudes other transverse diameters include by temporal diameter extending between the two ends of the coronal sutures and the measure 7.5 cm by mastoid diameter between the two mastoid eminence and it measure 6.5 centimeters.